Amnesty International over, the, well, the federal government has attacked Amnesty International, saying the international rights organization is siding with terrorists and has no legal rights to exist in Nigeria. Well, joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Inibaga Ifyong, and he's also a human rights lawyer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. It's interesting that Amnesty, again, is back in the news. The last time I had to talk about Amnesty versus the government was when we saw an anti-Amnesty um, international protest asking them to leave Nigeria because they were biased towards the federal government. And here we are again, this time the presidency being a bit direct um, with Amnesty International and saying that they have to leave the shores of Nigeria as they are being biased and that they should be investigated. Um, as someone who is, um, you know, an advocate for human rights and someone who's followed Am Amnesty International's um, movements and speeches and, and all of their reports um, when it concerns Nigeria, do you think that maybe the people that are in Amnesty International Nigeria have become very politicized and biased towards the country, especially the Buhari administration? This is one of the most reckless and frivolous allegations that, I, that has been made by this regime. I don't understand what they are talking about. It, it doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't make sense to me. The Amnesty International that I know, that Nigerians know, that the international community knows, has been deliberately nonpartisan. Amnesty International is credible. They always make reports or public statements after thorough investigation. So that is not a group, an organization that is going to be discredited by a regime that itself does not have any credibility. What they are saying is, you know, very, very laughable. I mean, it's, it's extremely laughable for anybody to suggest that Darkness International has some link with terrorists or is sympathetic to, to, to terrorists and so on. That is a very baseless allegation. What that Nation International does is to document cases of human rights abuses. And they have come out to say that cases of forced disappearance has to stop. These are not new things. There have been documented cases of forced disappearance where people are picked up at random in the name you know, of security intervention in the Southeast or in the North or other part of the country. These are things that Nation International has come out to say has to stop. Look at the case of Gloria, the lady who was picked up for allegedly being, you know, for dating or having a relationship with a member of IPOP or Eastern Security Network or whatever, you know, group they claim the boyfriend is associated with. Nobody would have heard about her if not that somebody came on social media to talk about it. She had just disappeared. And you can imagine other Nigerians who are languaging who are being held in solitary confinement by the SSS, the State Security Service, by military authorities or the police. People that are being killed in the Southeast without accountability. People that have been arrested without any documentation. This is what Amnesty International is talking about. We recall when the confrontation between Burata and the Islamic movement of Nigeria happened in Karuna in Daria. The government denied. They claimed nothing of thought had happened. But later, the Karuna state government now consisted a judicial commission of inquiry, which found that over 300, in fact, close to 400, by their own records, these are the ones they found, that close to 400 members of that group were murdered and buried in shadow graves. Nobody would have heard about it. Allegedly. This was the government confirming this thing. So when the government is coming out to say that Amnesty International has no legal basis to exist in Nigeria or should be investigated, I think they are just being very whimsical, and Nigerians should totally disregard it. But Amnesty International, like I said at the beginning, had have put out so many reports about police brutality, um, high-handedness in the army, um, and most recently, of course, um, disappeared, forced disappearance. Um, and looking at all of those reports by Amnesty International, I'm still probing to understand, has the government reacted positively or um, done something to, you know, counter um, the reports that Amnesty has put out over the years, I remember vividly, especially about the police, the police report that was, you know, um, abruptly um, refuted by the Nigeria police force. But all of these reports, have we seen the governments, whether past or present, act in a way that it, it seemed that they were trying to change 
um, the, the, the contents of that report so that one way or the other we would look good uh, you know, in the face of the international community or, or are we continuously having these rebuffs from the presidency? Not at all. The, the government has not been responsible. The government has not been responsive in cases of human rights violations. These things are going on. Nigerians are seeing it. For me, this is a matter of pretense for the government to come out and try to deride Amnesty International for merely restating what is known to the public, for what matters of public knowledge. Amnesty International has documented this in the very years, predating the current regime, it, even beyond the, the Buhari regime. Amnesty International has always come out to expose human rights violations. Even when the APC was in the opposition, when their rights were violated, the same group also spoke out. Go and look at the history of this organization. So for the government to say that they are partisan is just very funny to me. There is nothing partisan in the activities of Amnesty International. And they have legal basis to exist in the country, and they will continue to exist. Amnesty International is not going to stop to exist because we have a regime that is opposed to human rights. We have a regime that is not comfortable with compliance with the rule of law. We have a regime that has no respect for human life. If anyone is going to be investigated for being sympathetic to, to terrorists, I think it's the Buhari regime that has failed to restore sanity in the country, that has failed to bring terrorists to justice, that claims to be giving amnesty to terrorists that are killing people, that are maiming people, that are burning and destroying people's properties. That is a regime that should be investigated. A regime who had a serving minister that was indicted for being a terrorist sympathizer, for endorsing the activities of, of the Taliban, of al Qaeda, and so on. A regime that had a minister that, despite that garbage, was defended by the president. That is a regime that should be investigated for being a terrorist sympathizer, and not a group that is merely speaking out because the rights of Nigerians are being violated. Um, from all that you've said since we started this conversation, it, it seems more like the government maybe is um, not very welcoming to um, criticism or when people are pointing out their mistakes. Why do you think that this administration uh, is so edgy about criticisms? Because the hands of the regime are soiled with the blood of Nigerians. A regime that has killed so many people in, in, by soldiers. Look at what is going on in the southeast. People are being murdered extrajudicially. There is no form of accountability. People are being arrested. Look at the killing in Sunday, but also have still today. Nothing has been done about those who were killed. They are just going about, you know, as if these things that do not matter. People are being arrested extrajudicially, even when they are granted bail, they are still being released. I just mentioned the case of Gloria, the young lady who was detained. Despite being granted bail, despite the, an order of a judge, that she should either be charged to court or be released before the 31st of August. This is September. She's still in custody. So you see the things I'm talking about. That is why they are afraid that people are speaking out. That is why they are uncomfortable that they are being exposed. That is why they see Amnesty International as the enemy. And, and, and if all that you've said is glaringly true, um, why are we going about our businesses? I mean, Nigerians, when I say we here, Nigerians, inclusive of the CSOs and the human rights activists like you, why are we going about like it's business as usual? Why are we not screaming, screaming at the top of our voices? Why are we not doing the necessary to get our governments to be accountable? I wonder. I agree with you that a lot has to be done. I don't believe we have done enough. Both the civil society, the media, and Nigerians, we, we, we have not done enough. But you must also realize the climate under which we are operating currently. We have a regime that will not waste a second. You keep saying a regime. The... We're in a democracy. We're not in a military um, you know, era. So when you keep saying regime, I feel like we're in a different country. What exactly do you mean? I haven't seen the evidence of the democracy. <laughs> Everything points to the fact that this is a regime. As a matter of fact, you can call it a juncture. Because when you have court orders being disobeyed, when you have the National Assembly not serving the interests of the people, when you have the president not protecting lives and property, when human lives are meaningless, when organ institutions of state are not functioning, when the military is not respected, when the military lacks credibility, look at what happened in River State, where the, the military is reported to have fired, you know, uh, the, 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 the Navy, to have attacked people in a civilian boat, and they came out to deny it. Go and look at the comments on their page. Most Nigerians are attacking them. Nigerians don't even have confidence in the armed forces anymore. <laughs> that is not a democracy. Democracy must be rooted in the confidence of the people in the institutions of government. Currently, you cannot tell me that most Nigerians have confidence in the Bimbuari or most Nigerians have confidence in its ministers. This impunity has pervaded all over the country. 
So when we say it is a regime, it is actually a regime because if we have a democratic system of government, we have a president that is that believes in the rule of law, that subscribes to the constitution, you will not be having these infractions. You will not be having the government coming out to attack a group like Amnesty International. This can only happen under a junta. This can only happen under a regime. I don't want to use the word democracy because I do not believe that there is any shred of it under the current uh, system that we are witnessing all of us are free. But does this not also, all the things that you're saying, again, does this not also indict the your, your, constituents, uh, your constituency, because you're a lawyer and you're trying to tell me that the executive has so much power that it can, um, um, you know, somehow arm wrestle the legislature to its knees and do same to the judiciary, and so they take laws into their hands? Is that the picture that you're painting? Does that also not, oh, one way or the on other, the smear the, your the constituency the as being incapable of making sure that our well, justice system is something that we can rely on and the, truly the hope of the common person. On the part of the legislature, the National Assembly in particular, you, you, we cannot blame Nigerians because most of them are not representing our interests. They, they have made that very clear. See how they doctored the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Look at their approach to constitutional amendment, how they are abandoning the fundamentals in preference for partisan you know, matters, partisan interests, as opposed to the collective well-being of the nation. In, you, we have seen how members of the National Assembly have shown themselves incapable of representing the interests of Nigeria. We have seen how the Senate President, Ahmed Nawan, has publicly pledged allegiance to Buhari instead of to Nigerians that he's supposed to be representing. We have seen how the Speaker Femi is doing exactly the same thing. So these are people who are serving their interests. But on the part of the judiciary, I do agree with you that the judiciary has to also take a, a great, a large blame in the rot, in the decay, in the bastardization of our democratic process, of our institutions of government. Because if the judiciary has stood up or has stood up or is standing up to the impunity that is being carried out by the executive, by the Gwari regime, some of these things will not be happening. And it's very clear to me because when some of these matters come before the courts, the judges are not firm. The judges refuse to stand up to the executive. The judges refuse to insist that their order should be obeyed. Rather, we see judges, you know, some, some, of, some judges, not all judges, some judges, you know, being a bit too careful in the manner that they go about cases that involve the Buari regime, which is very unfortunate. That is why judges will make orders and those orders are treated like, 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 like a trash can, you know, as, as if the, the orders were never made. That is why judges to make pronouncements, and their pronouncements are disregarded because the judiciary is also complicit in what is going on. In the sense that judges have become very unwilling, very reluctant to stand up to defend their oath of office, to defend the constitution, and to hold the president and the executive arm of government accountable. So how do we intend to bring that change about in this country? It's seemingly, every, really, every arm of government seems to be at the beck and call of the uh, executive, and it looks like even our security agencies also are in a state of limbo. And let's not forget, 2023 is, of course, um, you know, in, in view, and most we hear now is about this party or that party, or this person, you know, visiting that person. But then our major headlines are about numbers of people who have been kidnapped, killed, homes destroyed, schools locked down. What should be the priority of the average Nigerian today as we get ready for 2023? If the elections were today, it would be a choice between the devil and the deep blue sea because look at what is happening in the PDP. It is an embarrassment. The crisis in the party. Look at the APC. None of these parties are serious. Today, people are decamping from here today. Look, in Anambra, I just read, yeah, Anambra said just yesterday, that eight members of the other assembly, they come from Abga to APC. And you, you wonder why they would do You know why they would do that? Because in the real sense of it, there is no difference between the two. And I've always described them as conjoined twins. These are just platforms for acquisition of power. So for us, if we are truly interested in change, the conversation has to go beyond these two platforms. These two platforms have shown Nigerians that they are not interested in real change. That is why when people say, oh, go and join APC, go and join PDP, they are serious. The reality today is that these parties are incapable of producing a progressive, clear-headed mandate, sane, rational, objective, and incorruptible discipline, president or leader in this country. They have shown themselves 
more amenable to the things that polarize us, to the things that divide us, they have shown themselves incapable of abiding by the rule of law. Look at the state that are under the PDP. What are their governors doing differently from PDP, from APC governors? Absolutely nothing. It is the same culture of impunity, the same corruption, the same lawlessness that has characterized the APC states, that has also characterized the PDP states. And that is why you see them in Tamari. Today, they jump from PDP. Tomorrow, they jump to APC. That is why both parties are building the judiciary, obtaining fraudulent and, and suspicious court orders, conflicting court orders all over the place, messing up the entire democratic system. If these parties are serious parties, you will see them adopt to change. You will see them reform. You will see them begin to listen to the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. But unfortunately, the battle has been shifted to the Nigerian people, which implies that Nigerians must be the ones to take responsibility to have a conversation beyond these two platforms to even demanding a fundamental change. A system change. We have gone beyond just electoral change. We need a system change, a system that has this change that has to be radical, that has to be re revolutionary in whatever language we want to define that change, whatever nomenclature we are comfortable with. The reality today is that we cannot have a progressive Nigeria, we cannot have a developed Nigeria in Nigeria, whose economy serves the collective interest of the people. In Nigeria, there are few people who do not control, you know, the 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 the, the stakes of the economy. In Nigeria, that is inclusive. In Nigeria, that is egalitarian. In Nigeria, whose president is not loyal to an ethnic ethnic group, to a particular religion, then a pan-Nigerian. That is the Nigeria that we need. Unfortunately, the current political system cannot produce that Nigeria, which is why if we are going to truly change this country, there has to be total demolition, a total destruction of the current system, which will now give birth to a new system with new ideas, with leaders with new ideologies who are totally driven by desire to change the faith of this country for the better. But who's going to stick their head out to do that? Because it also sounds like we are all playing the ostrich here. As much as there are a few people who are speaking up and, and you know, who might be also um, targeted as enemies of the government or people who are against the government, how many average Nigerians are ready to stick their head out? Now, let's look at the, uh, the voters' registration, the, re the registration that is gone, um, ongoing right now. Um, we can see that not many people are interested. And we also know of the case of voter apathy. So how do we even, who, who, who is ready for this change? Because we keep pointing fingers at our leaders, but those people are a mirror of society. So it means that maybe we deserve these kinds of leaders because we are just like them. That's the $1 billion question. Who is really willing to stake his life? For me, for me, my position has always been do what you can and leave the rest for history to judge. Because as it is going, it looks as if many Nigerians are resigned to faith. People have lost faith in the entire system. Look at the 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 the, the Karad, the sham that was called local government election in Lagos State recently. People didn't come out. People did not even bother. Nobody cared whether there was a local government election in Lagos State or not. Go and look at it. Some polling unit barely had five people coming out. And that is a party that fraudulently claimed to have registered millions of people just a few weeks or months ago in the same state. But in their own local government election, they could barely see voters, you know, come out to vote for, for either councillors or local government chairman. What does that tell you? There is serious voter apathy. People have lost faith with the electoral system. People have lost confidence in INDEC. People have lost confidence in the State Electoral Commission. But that doesn't mean that we should not take responsibility as citizens, which is why those of us who are progressive-minded, those of us who believe that things should be done differently, those of us who have a different vision for the country, we must find a way to organize, to galvanize forces, democratic forces, and begin to demand change whether at the level of the civil society, whether in terms of political conversation, whether in terms of civil action, there has to be something that has to happen. Okay. Whether you want to call it another answers, there has to be something that has to happen that will steer the kind of change that we want in this country. And it has to be citizen-driven and not government-driven. Because what we have seen is that any process in this country that is driven by the elite, that is driven by those in power, has failed. Whether okay. you want to call it national conference or whatever, we have seen that when citizens are not the one driving the process or true representative of the people, it has failed. Which is why, for us, it is still a long way to freedom. It is still a, a long walk to freedom. Okay. Because of that today, unfortunately, 
It appears we have not really found a solution to the problems of the country, but we must not give up. We must continue to press on. We must continue to fight on. We must continue to stand up to impunity. We must continue to challenge this regime and hold it accountable for the promises they made to this country in 2015 and 2019. Well, Ini Berifiong is a human rights lawyer and he's been talking to us on PLOS Politics. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that's it. We'll take a quick break and bring you a quick report. And right after that, we'll wrap things up. Stay with us.